Hello and welcome to Senior Spot. My name is Jen Quinn and I'm pleased to be the host of Senior Spot, which is a show that has a goal and focus on providing resources and information for the seniors in our community. Today, I'm really pleased to have as a guest on the show, Jennifer Cook, who's with the Atrium at Drum Hill, which is a benchmark facility. And she's here to share some of her knowledge and what the Atrium brings to the community. So welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for having me. I'm so delighted because we have so many members of our community that are affected with and by memory loss. Mm -hmm. And it's so important for people to be educated. So Jennifer, you know, when you joined the atrium, mm -hmm. uh, what brought you to the atrium? Why, why are you passionate about working there? Right, well, thank you for that great question. Uh, that ignites my passion. Um, my, uh, my family, as many families go down this, this road, um, has been afflicted with dementia and Alzheimer's, both my grandmother and my father. And uh, my father lived in North Dakota at the time, and so I didn't get to see him too much, but um, rode the journey with him. And it was, uh, it was last year he passed, so about uh, four sorry. years, yeah. So um, anyway, I thought, how could I find uh, some purpose and uh, meaning in my life and give back some of the knowledge and uh, experiences that I've had to share with families to help them through these these choppy waters, they really. That's, really a, that's a great way to yeah. describe it, choppy waters. And I often use the word navigate, which mm -hmm. goes right along with choppy yeah, waters. Absolutely. You know, being able to navigate and to help families. And, you know, you mentioned that he was in North Dakota. So being away and being afar from family members going through this and experiencing this, that that's extra challenging. Yeah, it was very difficult. In fact, one of the things that I love about the atrium is that we have a technologist on staff that can actually Skype with family members all over the country. So Perfect. when I give my tours, I always you know, give a plug for that because what a beautiful connection to be able to put your family member in front of your loved one even uh, at, at that stage. And Absolutely. it's really a, a blessing. We, we all need that. We all Absolutely. need that. And I think it's, it's extra important um, for folks that are affected by dementia or you know, other types of you know, um, memory impairment because you know, they may not remember someone's name but they certainly remember the way someone makes them feel, and by seeing somebody, that has a great impact. So, Absolutely. what a wonderful piece of technology that Isn't you have that there. Great? Yes, and they coordinate all the scheduling so the family members are available. It's planned, um, so everybody's ready. And in fact, we had a Thanksgiving celebration where a whole family skyped their son who was in New Jersey. So wow. about twelve of the family members got with the computer with Grandma. Yeah, and uh, they had a great time talking oh, to them. That, that makes a big difference. Even did some magic tricks. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the atrium supports, you know, the care for folks with memory impairment in, in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, could you share some of the ways that, you know, you feel atrium sets itself apart or, you know, some of the, besides the Skyping, which is a perfect yeah. example, what are yeah. some other examples that really help to create their best life possible? Right. So the best thing we can do for memory care is to live engaged, live now and live engaged, right? And so um, our whole day is focused around the senses ah. and around activities related to the senses because as you mentioned, the person is there and we wanna draw out as much experience as we can from their past and even in the moment, right? So the moment is real, no less real than for you and I. Mm -hmm. And so if we can bake some bread and the aroma reminds them of a time when they were at grandma's house and they made bread every Thursday and we engage in that conversation, that's the healthiest thing we can do for our loved ones suffering from, from memory loss in all stages of the disease. And so most of our programming and activities revolve around sensory integration and uh, we're very proud of that. We made some applesauce, which you can imagine the aroma of that. Sure. Um, we did some bananas foster with the flames, and you know, that's always us. Uh, so. <laughs> I'm sure that brought up some fun stories exactly. and some fun memories for exactly. people. Exactly, so it's really about the programming and activities. Um, we did a, um, some painting, and then we had a silent art auction. Oh. And invited the families in, and had some wine and some beverages, and it was really a fun time for everybody, so. Well, you know, it, it, that brings up a great point that you know, there's still so much that's there and, and you're bringing out the best in that. And I'm sure you probably have some artists that are residents there and what a joy for them to be able to express themselves and share their talents that they have. Um, mm -hmm. I know personally when I visited the atrium that um, I came in and there was someone playing the piano Absolutely. and it wasn't an entertainer, right. it wasn't a staff member, 
-hmm. it was a resident Absolutely. and what incredible value to that person's life and to the others that you know are residents along with that person right to give you an example of to the magnitude of that we had a, a new resident move in who hadn't played the piano for about 10 years and the family said well she was an active and, and award-winning pianist in her day a teacher and all kinds of uh, accolades and we haven't seen her play in about 10 years well an entertainer was there and she made her way over to the piano and, and sat down and began to play the bottom keys on the piano with the, with the pianist. So um, you never know what's locked away. And so yeah. our, our goal is to find the keys to unlock that engagement on Absolutely. a daily basis. And it comes in the most surprising moments. And, and that's what you have to look is for those moments when people right. come alive and, and really make, make those possible. And the surprising moments are the most rewarding moments for Absolutely. everybody that's involved. And, Mm -hmm. Part of the joy that I certainly get when I'm interacting with, with clients, you know, with, mm -hmm. with the memory impairment. Um, one of the things, you know, that uh, is, is a concern to people is, you know, what are some of the limitations when you have memory impairment. Mm -hmm. You know, can you give us some examples of things that are limiting, mm -hmm. you know, and then how you go about helping them to overcome that limitation. Right. Can you imagine the feeling that one would have if you were confused, if you got to the end of a hallway and you didn't know where you were going and you didn't know enough to turn around to say, this is just a hallway, uh, I just need to turn around and go the other way. But if you didn't know that, how scary that would be. And if you could put yourselves in their shoes and know how, um, how the world is changing for them inside, Mm -hmm. It's quite a scary, scary thought. Um, our, their feelings are just as much alive. Um, the fear. Absolutely. Uh, if somebody's mean to them, you mm -hmm. know, um, if somebody speaks loudly to them when they don't need to. Right. So imagine a world that's kind of scary like that. And if we can help reduce that by redirecting and being kind and speaking softly, those types of things, knowing who the person is, that's, that's really key. the key. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and some of the programs that you have obviously are very focused on the residents mm -hmm. on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but you also have a lot of programs that are available to families. Absolutely. Um, going through this, as you mm -hmm. shared about your own personal experience with your family members, um, a lot of times it's, it's like we said, unchartered and choppy waters, mm -hmm. and to be able to help them, what are some of the programs that you do at the atrium to be able to support the family caregivers and the loved ones? Mm -hmm. We do have a, a monthly uh, family care group that we put together and um, we have um, certified dementia specialists in our building. Um, our building is specific around memory care only and so every employee in our building has been trained with dementia and the onboarding that Benchmark gives is really critical to the success of the building. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to that, we bring in guests from the community, different um, service providers for the senior living community, senior um, services basically, whether it be for oratory or um, feet care, podiatrists, yeah. all kinds of services we bring into our community. Um, and we help our families to understand how to navigate all these different services, also benefits from from hospice and other um, outside Excellent. agencies that come into their new home right. and provide those services in-house. And that gives families a great amount of comfort because they need help navigating all the different needs when, when, they're not, when a, their loved one isn't able to communicate what they need. Right. We need to be able to provide those services in the most direct and easy manner possible. Right. So we support our families in that way. And then um, we are running in January a uh, five-week caregiver skill workshop and this is around the skills on how to help our caregivers so we'd love for folks to give us a call if they're interested in joining that five-week class it Excellent. is five consecutive weeks so it is a commitment yeah. uh, but we would would um, would welcome you into that because that will teach you some of the skills required absolutely and I love the word skills mm -hmm. um, because it is support but it really is all about skills mm -hmm. and you know everyone that comes into your facility outside vendors skilled agencies hospice they're all part of the total continuum of care. Absolutely. So you obviously work closely with them in developing a plan. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I think it's w worth noting once again that you're a, a complete memory facility, which is different from having it be a section or a unit that's secured in 
and assisted living. Right. One, so. one of the things people ask us is, what about end of life care? Of course, it's a difficult subject and one that people don't generally want to dive into, but it's important to know that when they come to a memory care uh, community such as the atrium at Drumhill, they're able to stay there um, through end of life. We provide those services and that gives families a great comfort to be there. Uh, their loved one won't have to move again. That we're going to be able to do the two-person assisted lifts or the Hoyer mm -hmm. uh, lifts or the, the Jerry chairs. So it's important to understand that we do the whole spectrum from high functioning, highly engaged, mm -hmm. you wouldn't know that the person's even memory impaired, right. all the way through end of life. And we're giving those families that great comfort and dignity yeah. at, at the end of well, life that's, as well. Well, that's a really important aspect because I know in working with the clients um, through the, my company in the care that you know making big changes, making moves really can help to, or you know, speed up the process of the decline. Mm -hmm. So having that continuity, having that same, you know, same place that they are calling home, because mm -hmm. we do need to understand that this is their home. We are visitors in their home. We are there to be able to support them in their home and in their journey. So I, I love the fact that all of these services can be brought in or provided by Atrium for people to be able to stay yeah, through end absolutely. of life. One of the small um, examples of how the independence and dignity is um, as simple as giving a resident a key to their room. You mm. know, I mean, to be able to go in and out as they please, um, be able to go outside to the outside patio and deck areas that we have with, with um, no limitations. These are the things that we provide the families to that really help to, to ease that um, feeling of independence right. and making them feel like they have ownership of what they decide to do. Yeah. Um, another item that we do is um, parallel programming. So okay. we have like, we'll have a big event. Maybe we'll have an entertainer on one side of the building. And then we'll also have other activities if they choose not to participate in certain oh. activities, there'll be additional activities happening, more engagement and um, from, from sensory integration, um, games. We do a lot of bingo and different sure. games to help engage. Um, and uh, we read books, we do poetry. We take trips. You know, oh trips yes, outside the building. Okay, so it's a lot of fun. We do a lot of different things that you wouldn't think. Well, you know that that's that's um, an interesting note that you know you think about going to maybe a memory facility and you think that there's not an opportunity to leave. Right. No, so tell me all. a little bit more about some of the trips because I I think that that's such an incredible value right. to add to their life. Absolutely. So we take a, we have a bus. We have our own atrium bus and. Um, we go out and about, we go to lunch, we go to, one of the favorites is Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, <laughs> well, who doesn't we love Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts, so a trip to Dunkin' Donuts to the dollar store. Sure, I mean, we all everybody love the loves dollars. a bargain. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so um, just small enrichments like that. We do, we have gone to some museums. Um, sometimes we'll just take a ride. We'll go to the Arboretum yep. and take a ride out and just see the beautiful leaves. Absolutely. Um, so uh, those trips are really important just oh, to feel, are. you know, when you leave and you come back home. That's right. This is now their new home. That's, I'm, and that's, that's a really important um, feature and a really important benefit for people to, to understand that their loved ones are going to be well cared for, mm -hmm. are going to be stimulated in a way that's going to help them to have the best day possible, um, and being able to have a key to your room and all of that is preserving people's preferences. That's right. You know, and then that's and that's a gift. Yeah. And um, you know, in terms of educating families, you've mentioned a few of you know the support groups. And do you have families that come in sometimes during activities and participate with their loved ones? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we love our families to come participate with us. In fact, we have. A, it's probably hard to see on the TV, but every month we publish our our calendar of activities. Okay. And I'll just open it up. You'll see it's quite an eye chart. <laughs> we have a lot of things planned for our families. And anything in bold on our, our monthly calendar, we would encourage our family members to join us. Okay. They're welcome anytime. The door is always open. Um, they can come visit their loved one at any time. Okay. Um, but absolutely, we have visiting dogs. We have an artist from Chelmsford High School that comes in every Great. Friday. And she's a big hit. Oh, I bet. She does artwork with the residents as well as doing artwork in front of them so mm -hmm. they can watch her do the artwork. Sure. It's a wonderful connection. 
Um, we had a wonderful Halloween party. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of different uh, things that, um, and a, a variety of things that families can, can be engaged in and come well, into our community and meet the other family members. That's yes. one of the biggest elements. Well, because they're all in a similar situation and they can help each other and support one another as well. Um, you know, learning from one another and learning from somebody else's experience is also a valuable piece if they're interacting with one another at the atrium. You make a good connection there because one of the things that's most surprising to family members when a new resident moves in is how alive the loved one is when they come and they're being stimulated by the activities and the other guests and the socialization mm -hmm. versus being maybe home alone or with one or two right. people. Um, it's almost like they get a spark and a renewness of life. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, there's a lot, a lot of things going on here. I'm having a lot of fun. The right. food is good. I have company. People are caring for yep. me. So a lot of times people are surprised by how much their family member perks up. Yep. You know, and so it's, you know, I have a, a close friend and her mother raised many children. And mm -hmm. her mother was an, an incredible artist and obviously being very busy with many children, raising mm -hmm. them. Um, you know, the artwork kind of, you know, went mm -hmm. to the side and it's just interesting how whether or not you have memory impairment that sometimes some of your past hobbies and experiences that you aren't able to enjoy because of different other things going on in your life, mm -hmm. it's amazing how some of those resurface. Absolutely. You know, and I really like the idea that the bold helps the families to understand an activity that would be maybe most appropriate for them to come in. Right. and do. Right. Absolutely. So what's the what's the most popular activity for families to be able to join their oh, loved ones? We do a lot of music. <laughs> music. I love music. I don't know if you know this, but music is the last sense to go. Yeah, I well you know, I, it's, it's I know a beautiful that thing. but other people may not know that. <laughs> I actually I I love to do a mu I do a music program called Joyful Memories oh, you do? where I go in oh, nice. and go into memory facilities okay. um, and sing songs of yesteryear Love i have a ball it. yes. it's my probably my favorite part of you know my job and my profession and so i know that but other people might not know that yeah, so you know music brings great joy it's amazing um, how music doesn't leave you sure. um, you feel it you sense it you hear it um, it creates memories yep. usually um, very happy memories usually happy memories um, a lot of our residents are dance get up and dance we have performers that come in and um, it's always a great time so those are the oh, family yeah. favorites they'll know they'll look at the calendars oh you know this performers on this day I'll make mm -hmm. sure to put that in my calendar absolutely and come in, so. you know because if, if someone isn't engaging or maybe more reserved it is amazing how the music mm -hmm. brings out the yes, best in all of absolutely. us. Absolutely. Um, we do that. We put on a karaoke CD and we have the little <laughs> music sheets and we pass sure. them out. We have a little sing along with the oldies but goodies. Yep. It's a lot of fun. And, and my rule of thumb with music is always I, I will ask the group, does it, do you need to know all the words to the songs? And a lot of times they'll say yes. I'll say no. Nope. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and most on. of us just know the chorus, and yeah. that's all good. Yeah. You know, so it's just getting people involved and, 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 and giving them something to look forward to as well. Absolutely. So um, in terms of, you know, some things that you've obviously shared, a number of things that you're quite proud of, mm -hmm. and I know that recently there was an award that mm -hmm. was given to mm -hmm. Atrium, yes. and I'd love to hear a little bit more about it and, and why you received the award. Okay, so the Optima Award was given to the Atrium um, for our programming, our dementia memory care programming and activities, specifically for memory care. And um, this was a huge opportunity for us to be recognized for the good works that we're doing. And, and you know, we're, we're fully engaged and busy every day. And mm -hmm. so for an outside group to come in and make us an assessment and, and sort of look at other communities and, and bring us to the top of that list was quite an honor. Well, so, congratulations. Yes, thank you. I mean, from, so, from everything that I've experienced, from everything that you're sharing, it certainly seems like, you know, the, the, the goals that you have and that the atrium has, they're being accomplished and, and making a big difference. Um, so, you know, with, with that award, I'm assuming that one of the things that they looked at was how you help people transition in. Yes, absolutely. And that's, you know, a big worry for mm -hmm. a lot of people because it's a major change. Mm -hmm. And with change, people are hesitant. Mm -hmm. So how do you help 
loved ones transition. Absolutely, yes. There's no one right answer to that. Okay. Because <laughs> everybody's different. Exactly. You so know, and everyone can be comes customized. At a, right, at every different stage. Um, but we do have this uh, memory box here. I don't know if the camera can see this. It's, it's a Live Now, Live Engaged memory box. Oh, I like that, that motto. Pretty? Yeah, isn't that really nice? And it's the six um, senses here. And um, what we want to do is ask our family members to come and put things in this box that would help us get to know their loved one as, and also to um, ring bells of memory for them. Maybe there was an award they got in the military or, or something sure. like that. So we'd ask our families, you know, could you let us know about your loved one and the things that will spark conversations with them. Yeah, to help you make connections and have your staff and the caregivers have bonds. Exactly. Because in order to trust somebody and be in a new situation right. that could be scary, you're looking to develop those connections and bonds. And to help uh, that process, we have a form called a, a positive interactions form, and that's exactly what it is. Okay. What are their favorite things? What were their careers? What were their hobbies? Who were their children? So um, important. What would, what don't they like? Oh, that's, that's <laughs> we'll just as from important. That, right? We, with our clients, we do, we call it a social history questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And obviously the family is, is is doing the majority of filling in the blanks for us, but you're right, the dislikes are just as important as all the likes. Right, right. Um, but you certainly learn a lot. So these are some examples. These are some examples, yes. So uh, hobbies, maybe some, ooh, sorry, some things to put in the box. Um, heirlooms. Oh. Um, you might want to put an heirloom in there. Military services. That's always a, a really wonderful way it to is. connect. And on the back are little um, questions and things that you that might prompt your memory in terms of thinking, sure. what, what could I put in this box that would be, you know, memorable? Right. So uh, family photos, obviously we love photos. Um, on each resident's door there's a, a shadow box where we ask, you know, please bring a picture of them mm -hmm. or the family members in there. We can put it in that box so they can identify their room in addition to their name. Great. Um, so the family photos. Um, sports. Oh, this it's, this is never ending, <laughs> especially in the Boston area. Absolutely, <laughs> there's there's always something to talk about. That's right. We have travel, and uh, and that's the last one. But yeah, so um, and so we'd ask that you put these um, these items of memory into the box so that we can then share them with with uh, with with the resident and with the staff. So, so it's really pulling out the highlights of their life. Absolutely. Okay. And it's important. And the box is stays in their room so that we can pull it out when maybe things are getting a little um, stressful or anxiety sets in sometimes with memory care in the late afternoon. There's something called sundowning yes. if you're not familiar with that. Mm -hmm. It's um, a time in the afternoon when um, they don't know quite why it happens, right. um, but light affects sundowning and, and it can lead to hallucinations and things like that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, being a memory care specialty community, we need to know how to handle that. And a uh, memory care box such as this, an engagement box, can help us to diffuse and deflect oh, absolutely. a lot. So yep. we can redirect. And so you're ahead of exactly. any of the behaviors that might escalate into something that would make them feel uncomfortable. Right. I love that, being proactive. You have to be a couple steps ahead. <laughs> you don't want to be reactionary. You want to be you know, proactive, absolutely. And uh, here's another example of our Live Now, Live Engage. This just came out for 2016. Um, these are the actual themes each month we're going to have around different shows. This is oh. a, a new uh, new engagement that just came out um, in terms of for 2016. So just to read a couple, January, Fiddler on the Roof, uh, My Fair Lady in February, Guys and Dolls in March. And so we'll do a lot of our activities and planning around the different themes, yeah. which will be really nice. Well, and those are, I, I, you know, just hearing those first few titles of shows, those are, you know, um, those are probably some activities and some shows that they saw oh, absolutely. once upon a time. So absolutely. it's really geared towards the, the generation mm -hmm. and in helping to develop the connections for that. For anyone that's visited the atrium, you know we have um, different memory stations throughout the building. So we have a wedding memory station and we put our residents' pictures up there if they'll let us. Okay. Um, we have a, a travel memory station, a, a dress-up memory station. I call it the diva <laughs> <laughs> memory station <laughs> with uh, bows and hats yeah. and gloves. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, there's, um, there's pets, uh, memory station. Um, I think I said teacher, but different ones to spur these same types of, like the memory box does, mm -hmm. to spur it with com the community. And sure. The items are meant to be touched and picked up 
and right. talked about, really engaging the, those sense of memories. Uh, music station, obviously, that's a big one. <laughs> right, with the big piano. Exactly. <laughs> I know exactly. that you have a piano, at least right. on, on one side. I'm imagining there's one on the, oh, the other oh, wing oh, as well. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mem the music is big. And then there's two other ones that we're doing um, called Aging Right. It's a, a group fitness class, and our activities um, director has gone through and been certified in this and so every morning Excellent. we have our exercise class and then we go into the daily activities and any news that might have happened we do it as a group nice uh, and we talk about what's going keeping on keeping up on current events absolutely we try to turn the TV off and so we're a little selective on what's going on yes. in world events just yep. to reduce the anxiety but uh, every morning that that's a, a very a favorite right after I was breakfast gonna say, I, I bet that's yeah. a big hit because do some exercises you know, or we have a generation of people that read the paper every, every day, day and yes. You know, stay right on top of things. So that's that's a wonderful way to help continue that, Absolutely. you know, that yeah. routine for them. And the second one, uh, this is a newer one, Artist in Me. It's ah. called Artist in Me. I'm still looking for the artist in me. I don't <laughs> you haven't found it? No, no. <laughs> not well, at all. we do our best to draw it out. So, <laughs> um, and that's also a program where um, it's a therapeutic program to draw out those those sort of those forgotten talents mm -hmm. that you're like, I, I knew how to paint once. I wonder if I right. could do it again. Right, you know, so the so. music therapy, the art therapy. Absolutely. There's multiple benefits to that for sure. So this has been so incredibly helpful to understand the atrium, the offerings, the support that you give to the families. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm just wondering if there's any sort of, um, any sort of tips that you might have for families if they're preparing mm -hmm. to enter into you know, a facility such as the atrium? Yeah, I would say the first thing to do is um, come tour. Come tour and see what, what we're all about because um, it's really a vibe and a feeling of community that you get, and I can't just tell you that. That's right. something you have to feel. You mm -hmm. have to feel the community and the family and the warmth that we have within the building, within the community, and the care, the level of care. We haven't even touched on the <laughs> care set. I thought, oh right. gosh, you know, so... Um, it's just amazing. Um, so if you came and you visited, you would understand all the elements and care and deep thought that's gone into the building. The building was built to be memory care only specifically for this disease. And unfortunately, the disease doesn't get better. Right. And so we are... So we have to find ways to uh, we have make the, lives right, better. The breadth of scope to be able to handle that. And we're very proud of that. Mm -hmm. And so we'd say, come on down and take well, a visit. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And there will be website listed, phone number, so please reach out to the atrium in Chelmsford at Drum Hill if you are in need of learning more about it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>